Well, um, ecosystem services are the services provided by natural systems and they were defined internationally under the Millennium Ecosystem Assessment. So we have from the year 2000 a standardised platform for ecosystem services which gives us an understanding of them providing us with cultural services, regulatory services and so on. Um, so the work that I've mostly been involved in is to do with managing surface water or storm water. And traditionally, the management of these systems has involved underground pipes and storage chambers and getting the water away from urban surfaces as quickly as possible um, and as safely as possible. In other words, it, it's seen as a problem to be managed not as an opportunity to be exploited. Now, the, the ability of ecosystem services assessment to give you value for using that surface water in a positive way is helping us to move away from this underground pipe drainage systems approach to one in which we are maximising the benefits from using surface water locally. And we have a tool called BEST Benefits Tool, and it will put a monetary value on a whole range of these multiple benefits, like human health benefits, benefits to ecosystems, carbon sequestration benefits, all of these. And these are all in addition to managing flooding and managing pollution of watercourses. So all this comes together as providing us with a means of valuing, all based on ecosystem services assessment. Well, one of the issues, of course, in particularly in developed economies, is that everything comes down to the financial bottom line. What's the cost? And what are the likely benefits that we're going to get? So we have established means of valuing, for example, new highways, bypasses, and you can determine what the financial benefits of that sort of thing is going to be based on, car journeys and those sorts of things. So decision makers are really fixated on money. And ecosystem services gives us the ability to actually monetize this wide range of benefits in such a way that the decision maker is confronted with numbers, pounds, euros, yen, dollars, on the bottom line that say, these are the benefits you will get if you use this option. And in our case, using green and blue options, nature-based options within our, our cities give us a whole range of other benefits. One of the first examples of this has been in, in the city of Philadelphia, where, I'm just trying to think of the date, it was in the 1990s, the first real valuation was done of this, using an ecosystem services approach, where the benefits from managing the surface water using blue and green nature-based solutions added to the pollution and the flooded benefits were three billion US dollars for the city. You don't get those benefits if you build underground storage tanks and pipes. So Philadelphia has now been building blue and green systems around the city as an alternative to using pipes and, and tanks because of all these benefits. Absolutely. I have a book published by International Water Association on sustainability assessment. But probably five or six years ago, I gave up because we should be doing sustainability assessment. But sustainability as a concept has become so devalued by decision makers that it's actually meaningless. The triple bottom line, which is economics, uh, society and nature, which make up sustainability, 
cannot be monetized. So I gave up. I'm not the only one. There are other prominent figures in sustainability assessment who gave up because decision makers were not listening. The problem we found was actually selling the message that it is much better to do these things in a green and blue way to decision makers. So although I know that monetizing these benefits is actually highly uncertain, I have had to go down that route. I've had to accept the only way to get decision makers and indeed key institutional players to take notice. What I know to be the better options of using green and blue rather than pipe systems, the only way is to monetize. There is a very large sewer catchment in the city of Leeds and it's adjacent to a big park called Round Hay Park. Now Yorkshire Water, who are responsible for the sewer network, have to improve the discharge from the combined sewer overflows. So the traditional approach to doing this would be to, to build new tanks in the sewer network to store uh, some of the extra water so that when it stops raining this water can be released back into the main sewer network and go down to a treatment plant. That's a traditional way and we looked at that option. The only benefit uh, which that creates is to uh, water pollution reduction and some flood risk reduction. There's limited flooding in the area. Of course, once you build tanks of concrete, then you create an environmental impact because there's a lot of CO2 emissions associated with that. So there are negative impacts from that. So we also looked at a number of options to do with using blue-green nature-based solutions. And these are spread out throughout the whole area. Um, so these, these are new grass depressions. Uh, in some cases, we're looking at people using rainwater storage in, in their gardens and things like that. So a whole range of different things. And what we found was that the benefits of doing that gave us, in terms of cultural ecosystem services, almost £5 million worth of benefits. And in terms of regulatory ecosystem services, almost £4 million. None of those benefits could be achieved using a tank and pipe system. The water pollution benefits, however, of those blue-green options were relatively modest, only of the order of one million pounds. So you're creating a system which has main benefits to do with amenity, for example, significant benefits to elevating property values for the people living in the area. Now the issue for Yorkshire Water was the traditional solution cost one third of the blue-green solution. So the blue-green solution was three times the cost of the traditional. But of course it gave a lot more benefits. It had a positive net present value which means that its long-term return on investment is positive. Whereas the tank option had a negative net present value, in other words wasn't good value long term. But, up front, it was much cheaper. Now, the question is, and this is a question that is arising now with these valuations, the benefits are to individual properties, they're to human health, so uh, human health alleviation, um, for which health authorities should be paying, a whole range of these benefits are nothing to do with the duty of Yorkshire Water. Duty of Yorkshire Water is to keep the watercourse clean and avoid flooding from the, the sewer network. So the question is, all these other benefits, who should pay for them? And now these case studies, we now have a whole list of case studies with our benefits evaluation tool, and there's a Dutch equivalent called TEEB which is showing the same things. 
that the benefits are accruing in areas that are nothing to do with surface water management or sewage management, they're, they're in these other areas. So how do we, you engage with people, for example, the health authorities, and say to them, well, you need to pay for this aspect of the benefits because it's significantly important for human health. And that's where we stand with this issue, worldwide, not just here. It's easier in Philadelphia because the mayor of Philadelphia is responsible for water, home and health, education, crime, for all of the municipal services. So when you, you have different responsibilities for different municipal services, then you have these tensions between where are the benefits accruing and where are the people who should be paying for those benefits. So we have some way to go yet to understand the ecosystem services benefits and who should be paying to get those benefits. Because what we're talking about is different decision makers in different institutional groupings.